Hey guys, I'm Mike, and today we're going to make a concrete countertop for our Kamado table. The first thing that we have to do for this is we got to build a mold. And we're going to be using this 3 quarter inch um, particle board material with a melamine finish. And the melamine is going to be good because we'll be able to pop the mold right off of the concrete and it'll be nice and clean. So the first step is we got to build our mold. So we have a hole in our countertop for the Kamado grill. So <clears throat> whether you're making a countertop for Kamado grill or a sink or whatever, there's going to be some space that you're going to have to block out. So what we're using to block out that space is we're using this pink insulation foam. And what we'll be doing is we're going to first glue these two together, these two pieces. And we're just using regular wood glue. And we're doubling it up because it's just not thick enough for a countertop. You want to make sure that whatever mold you use is at least the height of the thickness of the, the countertop that you're going to be making. You're going to just put the two pieces together, clamp it down, just let it sit for a few hours so then we can shape it. So we've glued together our pieces of foam for the mold and we put that aside. Now what we're going to do is we're going to do some cuts to actually make the mold out of the melamine particle board. The first thing before we cut anything is we check our measurements. So we went back to the table, looked at all the measurements. Sometimes when you actually build something, things might shift. It might be a quarter inch or eighth inch off. You want to make sure that it's the right size uh, to fit. I wouldn't stress it too much, but you might have to tweak things as you go. So make sure you always check your measurements. Here we go. Alright, so we cut our piece and now we're going to just do a test fit to make sure our mold will be accurate. That's pretty good. We included space in the, in the, um, the cut list if you go to Smoke and Hammer and download the plans if you didn't already. You could do that if you're following along. You'll notice that there's space. Um, on the 4x8 sheet for these pieces. You can also just buy these this piece actually at a PVC material um, or a similar type melamine finish and basically you could just buy these guys and cut them to size if you want to save yourself some time. It costs a little more money but it's probably worth it just in the amount of time it takes to set up the, the jig and whatnot. So what we're going to do is we're going to cut these to size, attach it, and then get ready to pour our concrete. So. We cut all the sides for the mold. We actually cut them a little bit longer than they need to be. Because what we're going to do is we're actually going to overlap on the ends. And basically what that'll do is we just have to line it up um, on one side. So it's going to kind of do this pattern all around. It just makes it easier to, to, to set it up and keep it nice and tight. So we finished screwing in the sides to the mold. What we're going to do now is we're going to go in and we're going to caulk with the silicone all of the, um, the inside corners. And what we want to do is get a nice bead along there and we're going to clean it up with our finger. And that will be the top edge of the, the countertop. So we want to take our time, do it right, make sure it's nice and clean. I have a, a wet paper towel here to make sure that it stays clean. Um, and it's easy to just kind of wipe up as you go. We're gonna now cut the the, the circle out. 
that's going to be in the form that's going to make the hole inside the countertop. So what we're going to do is first we're going to take a string. I got some some steel wire. I'm just going to use that. And we're going to find roughly the middle of this piece of, um, of foam. So we're going to kind of just approximate the middle. Now you can use string or something else. I'm using steel wire just because I have it. Also, once I get the right measurement, it's going to be very rigid, so it really shouldn't, it shouldn't really change much. Now, our hole is 21 inch diameter, so we're going to go 10 and a half inches. I'm going to use those little marks as a guide. So we have our circle drawn, and what we're going to do now is we're going to cut this out. You can cut this out on a bandsaw, or you can cut it out by hand. And then later kind of go back and, and clean it up but what we're going to use is a jigsaw what we're going to do now is we're going to go back and we're going to sand it down so we're just going to sand it I'm using 80 grit sandpaper we're going to smooth it out After you sand it down with the 150 grit and you kind of wipe this down <clears throat> and you clean up a lot of the dust, <laughs> what you're going to do, and you should wear a respirator by the way, uh, what you're going to do is you're going to go back and you're going to use some packing tape to just go along the edge and make a nice clean finish along the edge so that when the concrete comes out of the, uh, the form, it won't be sticking to, to the foam. If you have any seams, you just kind of work them out. Then what we're going to do is we're going to take this, this circle and we're going to glue it down to the inside of the form. All right, we're going to measure it out, drop it in place, glue it down, and then we're going to hit it up with a nice bead of silicone. So we, uh, we assembled the, um, the top mold. And basically what you're looking at is the uh, what will be the bottom of the countertop. We're going to basically pour it in place and then we're going to flip it over. Um, we glued this guy down with the silicone off camera. And what we're going to do now is we're going to actually reinforce this concrete countertop with some rebar and some wire and some, some mesh for the concrete. So what we do is we got this piece here and all I'm going to do is lay it on top and we're gonna kind of mark off we're gonna mark off exactly what section of this we're gonna be keeping and we have wire cutters that we'll use to snip it And now what we're going to do is we're going to we're going to put a couple of um, pieces of rebar on each side of this just to reinforce really this area here, um, which as you can tell just by looking at it can get a little bit vulnerable to, to cracking and whatnot. So we're just trying to really beef this thing up. So we got our rebar. And what we're going to do is we're just going to. We're just going to drop it on the ends of our mesh. And then using some galvanized steel wire, I got 24 gauge here. I'm just going to tie it onto the mesh. Um, it'll keep it in place. And when we drop it in, it's going to kind of just sit in the middle of the countertop. We'll show you when to do it. Basically, you want to go about two thirds filled, then put it in, and then we're going to put concrete on top. But you'll see that in, in, a, in a little bit. So right now we're just going to tie this guy on.
Okay. All right. So now this rebar doesn't go the full length of the grill. I, ideally, it probably should, but I don't think it really needs to. Um, again, I'm just more concerned with this section. But you could literally frame out this entire thing, and it would it would be um, probably a good thing to do. And as far as the way I'm tying it, it, it isn't. You know, these aren't beautiful ties. It doesn't matter because we're just gonna be filling this with concrete. Basically, all the the function of this tie is just to keep it in place on the rebar. So, you know, whatever you think, you know, just wrap it a bunch of times and just make sure that it's secure. Whatever you think is secure should be good enough. Um, what we're going to do now is we're going to actually tape up all of the screws because when we, uh, when we actually pour this concrete and we kind of scrape it over the edge, we don't want any mix to get into the, the screw holes because then we'll have a problem taking this thing apart. Like, now let's mix the concrete. So what we've done is we've poured about two thirds, about half, well, might be closer to half, but it's about two thirds of the way. And what we're gonna do now is we're gonna lay in the rebar. You wanna make sure that before you put it in the rebar, you have at least half of the concrete poured. So it kind of sits in the middle of the concrete. You don't wanna go in sinking all the way to the top surface. That's it. Just gonna set it in place like that. Not too close to the uh, to the edges. Just push it in slightly. That's it. So it's a good thing we did this with the tape. Otherwise it'd be pretty tough to get these, uh, take this form apart. 